um, and we'll send that out to you via email. If you miss anything or if you want to see the slides that uh, Tim will go through today. Um, yes, we are going to have a webinar today about introducing math and literacy into PE, hosted by Tim Taggart, our new Heart Zones marketing partner. Uh, he works throughout the U.S. running professional development days and working in various conferences, doing presentations and uh, advocating for or promoting Heart Zones among with along with other products that you'll see today. Um, thank you for hosting, Tim, and take it away. Awesome, thank you for that nice introduction. Yep, so my name is Tim Taggart. I have been in physical education for 27 years. It's crazy to say that, and I am only 51 years old, so over half my life uh, has been in physical education, which is pretty cool. And I, I think, growing and learn some things and I love to share those which is why I go around the country and do those workshops so I'm going to just jump right in here I'm going to share my screen and I have a very nice uh, virtual classroom presentation for you which everybody will get a link to this when the, the session is over so we're going to focus a little bit on brain play later but really right now I want to talk about tag time and the partnership so we're going to click over here on tag time and it is point and click, so you can use this on a tablet or on your smartphone, or it works great on a PC as well. So you can see here, we have three volumes of activities here. You can click any of those, click on any of these, it will bring up a video for you to play. But we're gonna focus right here, bottom right, just because in the bottom right doesn't mean they're not my favorite. So here we go, hard zones, check it out. So what is Smart PE? I mean, I'm not gonna read every one of these bullet points for you, but you can check them out. But quite honestly, it's movement, and I will just simply ask you, I do ask this in every session that I do, whether it's a conference session or a full day PD, how do you grade your students? Um, I get a kick out of this, and if you guys are all in mute, so I won't hear you chuckle, but my gut tells me you grade your students quite a bit based on your mood of the day. You know, how are you feeling? Are you sick? You know, did you have a tough day? Did a student act out? Did you have a fight at home with your significant other? And so you grade a little harsher, but it's really been pretty subjective. Um, now, Heart Zone Solutions takes that subjectiveness out of the picture. And so you're gonna get a big package and you'll see, you're gonna get, depending on what package you get, you're gonna get a big case like this with a bunch of heart monitors. Now, if you're elementary, you are going to get a, a bunch of blue bands. These are great for elementary students. You'll see all the girls in my videos are using blue bands. Or if uh, older kids or adults, you're gonna get a red band right here. So the sensor is the same, but the bands are just a different size. Now, this is the Heart Zone page here. So you can click on Heart Zones. It'll take you directly to their website. You can watch videos here. I'll just click on this link real quick. I'll share this tab as it opens up. So you can see it goes right to the Heart Zones website. Here's a bunch of videos so you can learn about uh, Smart PE movement, Sock Prairie Healthcare, uh, MVPA assessment, all those wonderful things. So we're gonna move back now to this presentation. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't say, you want a discount? If you mention tag time, you'll get a little discount. So I'll whisper that. All right, hope everybody here. Now let's get into the fun. We only have, um, you know, try to be done at 5.30. Um, maybe we'll go a little bit over, but hopefully we'll be done at 5.30. If you do have any questions, please take yourself off mute or put it in the chat and Sarah will read that question to me. All right, let's check out this first video. So this is called Rocket Tag and it's a great activity and it is, I'm gonna mute it for a quick second while I'm explaining the instructions here to the girls. So we have eight participants, um, just made all these videos on Sunday and edited them the last couple of days and put them in here. So Forgive me if something slides through, like normally my neighbor has a bunch of uh, dirt here for his yard. Uh, that's not always there. All right, so I'm showing you where you tag. Very easily, we're gonna bump a ball, just like what I'm holding in front of the camera, assuming you can still see me. So they're just gonna do an underhand bump, like a volleyball serve, and the other person's gonna catch it, and then they're gonna bump the ball back. Depending on age, if they're younger, I have one young girl here, you can see in the bottom left, holding that green ball, Stella. She's just gonna toss and catch, because I don't think the skill set is she is there. So I'm gonna take it off mute. You'll hear the music. you hear the music on your end. You wanna turn your speakers up, you can hear it. When the music stops, whoever has the ball has to tag the person across from them. And here you can see I have the uh, picture. 
and we have the hardest cancer, so our heart rates are starting to get into the yard, moving into the yard. So, yeah, music stops and they take off. You can watch those numbers go up. You've got the ball, right. so, you know, even though I said you're not allowed to throw the ball at the other person, and on the video, Addy was staring right at me as I said it. He still threw the ball. So, all right, here we go. Learning our skills. Bumping, catching, tossing. I love it. Tagging in the state way. Here we go. I'm going to stop it any second. Here we go. There it is. Off we go. The races. Now you're only playing against your partner. Once you tag your partner, play is over. You can see we have a small area here, so it is facial awareness is key. You have to keep your head up. All right, wonderful. I think you guys are good there. I'm going to stop this video, and we are going to go on to the next one. So we are going to play Flying Saucers. This is one of my favorites. If you've been in one of my workshops over the last couple of years, we have definitely did flying saucers as a warm-up activity. And so real simple what flying saucers is. I'm one, I'm a huge UFO alien uh, affectionist. I really want to believe strongly that they're here. I'm going to pause this before they take off so I can explain what we're doing. And um, here we go. So we're pretending to be UFO flying saucers. If you are inside a hula hoop, you are a UFO. Now, this is a little bit like uh, musical chairs. I'll play music. When the music stops, if you're in a flying saucer, that means that you are one of the winners and everybody else is uh, not the winner. And so they have to try harder. Now, how do you become a flying saucer is you will run around. You can see here, Maya's a great frozen or freeze frame action shot there. You have to slam dunk the ball through the hula hoop. You're not allowed to throw the, the ball at them. That doesn't work, doesn't count. You have to slam dunk the ball through the hoop. So if you're close, you know, you can throw it down a foot or so. And you're not allowed to ever grab the hula hoop. You can obviously, if kids are running full speed, you grab the hoop, it's going to be a dangerous situation. Okay, so here we go. Now you can see Maya missed. So it's not as easy to get through there. And I don't think the ball went through, but Maya, I guess, con still out of that hula hoop. You get the smell All right. You can walk after. We have three people on the board. Great. Oh, yeah, 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 I like it. This is a great game. If you have 50 students, you just adjust how many hula hoops you're going to have. Um, typically, I don't ever go more than about 10 hula hoops, and it works really good with our It's almost always at 56 students if I have 30 students, or 25 to 30 students. Here's another bird's eye view. Same game. So, I don't know. I saw at least two balls go through there. Now, Maya makes the Cardinals 10 hands the ball back and now realizes that uh, she's trapped very hard for the hoop on if you hand the ball back so i don't recommend that i recommend putting the hoop on and just running for you all right it's fun you can see here we've got all that sensor just clicked off so we have four people on the yellow yeah tell us more about what's going on in the corner we're not uh we have a question about what that small box is in the corner oh yeah sure so I'm gonna pause it here so you can hear me. So that small box in the corner is the move program that works on your iPad. So I have my iPad here uh, in front of me. I can uh, click it on, but that will simply, that screen is a screen capture of my iPad. So what I simply did was I downloaded a program and I um, screen recorded while we were doing this. I had a couple of problems. I do live in Florida. You can see it's a pretty sunny day, which most days in Florida are sunny days and my ipad overheated because i didn't have it in the shade um i actually put it in the fridge to cool it down so we could get back to the games as fast as we could but so this is showing you their active heart rate so if you look a um, little bit hard because this is a blur but you can see there's a heart rate sensor right there here on valentina every sophie you can see here is there in the background everybody's wearing one i am student 10 so don't think that student 10 is, uh, well, you can, because I was just standing in the background um, giving instructions and yelling encouragement and, you know, what to do. So you'll never see me uh, get out of the gray. I get in the blue a couple of times, but I don't get very high. But everybody else is doing all right. You really want to be the yellow, the orange, uh, red is, is killing it. All right. 
move on. Pause this one. We're going to move on, go to the next activity. All right, stomp or shoot. And we're going to share that screen. This is a pretty cool game. So I'll let the logo come up here, then I'm going to uh, stop it before it gets into it. Just heard another question come in. Just so you know, I can't see the chat box, but I do hear when you send in a chat, and I like that a great deal. So these are called question. stompers. Oh, you have another question for me, Sarah? It was a question from Beth. Um, oh, hey, Beth. Go ahead, Beth. Yeah. No, I just was commenting how great it is. Yeah, Beth is um, the expert in this industry. I'd say one of the top for sure. So Beth, if you want to add on to anything I'm saying, I um, gladly accept your wisdom. So, all right, this is a stomper. If you've never seen one of these, this is how you get student engagement. I've heard that um, one of the complaints some teachers make is that their students are no longer engaged or they don't feel like they can get the engagement that they used to get. Um, my personal opinion on that is, you know, be, be better maybe. Do things that your students are wanna, are going to want to do. Stompers are one of those things. So it comes with uh, six of these uh, rainbow colors, of course. You get 36 balls, also different colors. Now to load them, you can either squish the balls or push them in. But I'll, Or what I like to do is just use your thumb or finger and just push the ball into the tube like that. Now your K-1-2 students will have a hard time loading them so we have what's called cannon cubes or stopper cubes now another one this is what i used to sell is a parachute nylon material but really had nothing but quality problems they'd always tear out in the corners so i'm hoping you can see that i'm gonna throw that down so i redesigned them through tag time they're now felt they're a lot stronger and if you can see here they load super easy also, these are great for adaptive students. I can set this on a desk, a table, and I can just press down like I'm doing CPR, and it will launch that cube right out of there. If I'm using my hands, I can expect it to go 15 feet or so. If I'm stomping on it with my foot, I can get the cannon cube or the stopper cube to go about 25 feet maximum. But the balls, on average, will go well over 100 feet. So let's show you how this works which is pretty cool. So in this version, we are doing what's called uh, stomper shoot. Their goal is to shoot the ball through the hula hoop. And then there are five spot markers on the ground behind them. When the ball goes through the hoop, and, and it's on mute, so don't think um, you're not hearing kids, if something's wrong with you, they're muted. And so the ball goes through the hoop. I think Valentina is going to get through there. Bounce through, that counts. They're going to move that purple stomper back one spot. Valentina is going to get her ball and then go to the end of the line. Now, every person on the team has their own ball that matches their team color. So it makes it easy to know who is where they're supposed to be and where they're not supposed to be. Now, Team Red didn't quite understand the instructions. Or more likely, I didn't explain them very clearly to Team Red. So they have Stella launching it every single time. I finally caught them and told them they need to rotate through. Once they rotate through, Maya shoots it, bounces right through, so they're good. They should be able to move that one back. Now, this is a fantastic game. The farther away they get, here you go. Now you can really see the spots really well. I'm going to unmute them here a little bit. But I will turn it down. Just doesn't feel right not to hear, uh, hear them screaming and having fun in the background. So you can see as they get farther away, more they have to run. You launch your ball, you get your ball, you go to the back of the line. So the longer you play this game, the farther you're running. And I'm telling you, your students are going to be sprinting back and forth to win this game. Uh, activity, I should say. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we're working on eye-foot coordination in a fun way. If you have students who don't have the ability to stomp, but they can hold a three-pound medicine ball and drop that medicine ball um, you know, safely, so it's not going to land on their foot, you can drop a three-pound medicine ball on this on the stopper and it will work exactly like if myself you know 200 pounds is stomping on it it will go just as far so it's pretty cool there's a lot of ways you can include your adaptive p students into these activities and do this game and again if you're going to use the cubes i would simply move the spots closer to the hoop so then if you do need to use a table or something of that nature the, your students who are in wheelchairs can simply press down and launch the cannon cube or stopper cube uh, through those hoops wonderful and it is a good activity and you can see heart rates are are doing very very well all right here we've got the uh, stella's mom in the background helping her out i love it all right let's us move on to the next one so i do have about 15 different variations or different games um, of those and we're only going to go through two of them today 
And then we're going to get to the literacy and the math part, which I'm really excited to tell you about. Okay, yeah, I did everything right, so you're here. And I just realized this whole time I haven't been maximizing the video, so I apologize for that. I will not uh, keep doing that. So here we go. You're going to see here we're going to do what's you're kind of the ready? water bucket race. I'm going to mute myself. So I'm not talking over myself. So what we're doing here is the course is set up exactly the same way. I added a hula hoop in front of each stomper, and one teammate is here, and the rest of the teammate is in the, the far end. So the idea is you're going to get all six balls from the grass into the hula hoop. The first team to get all six balls in the hula hoop first clearly is the team that that wins. Now, you can see what they're doing here. Valentina, she launches the ball all the way to the end. Sophie picked it up. She's going to run to the far spot, toss it to Addy. She's going to run to the next spot. Addy tosses back, and they kind of leapfrog themselves. And you imagine back in the old days when you had to put out a, you know, put out a house fire or any kind of fire, and they would do the water bucket brigade. You know, one person fills it up and you hand it down the line. A little bit similar, except we're doing tossing and catching. So again, we're meeting those state and national standards through those skills, and I love it. You see how far Stella just did on the right? Um, I don't know what grade she is in, but she's definitely about five years younger than everybody else. And you can see here that she just blasted it pretty far. Actually, in one of the videos, she I thought she was going to get it stuck in the gutter. It was about a foot away from going up on the roof and in the gutter. So that little girl um, was fantastic at this. All right, let's put them on mute so you can hear them or off mute. I like it. So Team Yellow's got three in there. Oh, Team Yellow, I didn't notice. He took one out of the hoop and loaded it into the can, into the stopper. That's going to make it a lot harder to win if you pull them from the hoop and do that. Now, your students, the more they play this, they will get smarter at this. Uh, this is uh, Luna here. She should already have loaded this stopper for the next player. So when they get the ball back, she drops it in. The next player can simply just stop and it doesn't have to take time to load it. All right, so here's a reverse angle. You can hear, hear how much fun my daughter Maya is having. I love it. It is great. So this is fun. And again, heart rates are up. They're stomping. They're running. They're being active. It's pretty much nonstop. Ideally, three to four people per team, and you would have six teams going at the same time. And it goes very fast. Everybody gets their turn. Whoever ends up on the last stop randomly, they replace the person who's on the stopper, and they get to take their turn moving forward. All right. Let us now get into the math and literacies part. Now, I do have games with the stoppers that teach you how to do, uh, how to include math into those games. And I do those in person, and I will make videos and get them included here. So let us get this going. I think you guys can see the brain play one. I think I clicked the right one. I believe so. So we're yes, going to fast play. forward. Awesome. Thank you. So when, when it gets to here where it's about to start, I'm going to... Nope please frame it right there. So what brain play is, it is a 150 balls. Now, 120 of those balls, there's 40 that are orange, 40 that are red, and there are 40 that are blue. What's pretty cool about these is they have letters and numbers on them. So every ball will have a capital letter, a lowercase letter, and then a number on it. In this case, we have the number nine. So there's an underscore line. So you know that this is a nine, not a six. However, the game that you're about to watch is called Fastest Math in the West. I have a small speech impediment. I should have named it something easier for me to say. I have a hard time saying Fastest Math in the West without stumbling on those words. Now, if you are, so what you're going to do when this game, so there's a blue team, the red team, and an orange team, ideally. I didn't have enough players for three teams, so I just had to do red uh, versus blue. But anybody can tag anybody. If orange tags blue, doesn't matter. Whoever adds nine to four first and says, yell it out, put it in, in the comments. But I hope you said 13. If you said 13, right, you are correct. The person who was slower or maybe someone said 12 or 15, they said the wrong number. They have to go into the yellow area, which I made a little yellow box on the inside. It kind of looks like a diamond. Now, in the past, I would have called that a, a jail or it's a prison. You get captured and capture the flag game. You go in a hula hoop, that's prison. We got to stop doing that. Um, I hate to admit it. It's, it's embarrassing. I was doing that as recently as just two years ago. I was still saying that when we came out of COVID. Um, and I feel bad. Every school, there's a student in your school, if you're still teaching, you have at least one student who has a relative. They have a, a loved one. Who knows who it is? 
but they know somebody who they're connected with who's probably in jail. The odds are just, unfortunately, too high that I believe that's true. We all have, you know, students who are going through that. We don't always know that. In fact, we don't, we rarely know if that's the case unless it was, you know, major news. But you know who does know? Their classmates know. So when we say that, you know, you're going to go into the prison, we are setting them up, one, to get teased, unfortunately, and we're, you know, they're probably, it's in the back of their head. Maybe they don't show it, but we're putting that in their head and we don't need to do that. So I now call this the quicksand. And what I like about the quicksand is it actually serves a purpose better than when we would call this to jail. So quicksand is a slow sinking demise. And hopefully anytime you do a jail or prison type situation in your games, you always have a way for people to get out of that so they can get back into the action, right? Well, quicksand, you're always just a helping hand away. So I like it. So you're there, the longer you're there, you know, you're sinking, you're sinking, someone can come and they can reach their hand and they can pull you out of the quicksand. I love it, it's fantastic and I think really it's my soapbox moment of the presentation here today we got to stop saying jail and start using quicksand or or anything else you like but i like quicksand so whoever is slower or gets the math wrong adding these together they go into the quicksand you're not there forever i'm going to switch my own ball to a blue or a red ball so anybody on my team if i have the red ball you can see i have the number three here so anybody on my team can get me out they're going to come over to me we're gonna i'm gonna hold my ball out, they're going to hold their ball out, whatever number they have. Say they have a five. I'm going to say out loud, and I have to do this on the inside if I'm in the quicksand. I will say five minus three is two. Their job is to confirm that that's correct. Now, if we're K12 doing this, we can do that math together. We can work it out together. But third grade and up, person who's in the quicksand, they have to do the subtraction to get out. Addition puts you in, subtraction takes you out. All right, now let's watch and see how this plays. This is a, a game activity that is a lot better with bigger groups. So it goes pretty quick with, with just eight players, but usually when you have 30 players, this goes on a little bit longer, and it's, it's great fun. So here you can see one of Maya got in, Luna came over, she helped her get out, so she's out. Lisa's in the middle, Maya's gonna come over, Lisa says the math, you hit my yell out the answer three is correct. All right, Stella's in. She still needs someone in blue to come and help her get out. Now you can tell that uh, right there, my daughter, Maya, daughter with the blue hair is my oldest daughter, Snoopy. You'll notice uh, that Whoa. First call. Remember, spatial awareness. You have to be careful when you're moving around. Oh, I love it. There we go. Now, if you also pay attention to my daughter during the pool hand, her strategy is excellent. Now, she's played this before, but she has a huge advantage over everybody else. She knows figure out what the answer is before you ever tag the person. So you notice when she tags someone, she's immediately yelling out the answer. And so this game is over. The red team is completely captured in the circle. And so the blue team was victorious. And they win, and the red team feels much shame. Uh, just kidding. They get a, they all get to come out, and we start over, and they do much better the second time. So it's a really great game. There's a lot of SEL here in this activity. I'm going to pause it right there. What I love about brain play is there is tons and tons and tons of SEL. This game specifically, I'm going to be pointed out. If I'm trapped in the quicksand, I'm on, on team red. Now, what I play in the beginning, and this was the rule here, someone comes to help me out they're not allowed to get tagged. So no one can tag them and put them in the quicksands because we're learning. I want it to go you know, positive for everybody and we're good. But once we evolve past that, we've played a few rounds and everybody understands and knows exactly what they're doing. I changed the rule. So if someone is helping me get out, let's hold the number here, they can get tagged. And this is really where the SCL comes in. One, you have to get your teammates out. If you don't get your teammates out of the quicksand, you're, you're never you're not going to win this game very often. More, you know, you, that's really a big part of it. You have to think of them. But if I'm in the middle and I have a teammate coming to help me get out of the quicksand, and I see another player coming and they're going to tag them, and I know that they're going to lose because they're not paying attention, I will back away from them. I will pull my ball away from them, and I'm going to yell, "Heads up! Look out! Run! Run! Run!" And I will sacrifice myself to stay in the quicksand longer so my teammate doesn't get captured. We really are teaching them in an authentic way to put somebody else's needs above your own. 
And I just got to tell you, I think that's huge. We don't see that a lot in physical education, and I want to see more of it. And in brain play is how we can get more of that. All right, we're going to go on to one more activity here, and then we're going to have just a couple minutes left for Q&A. I don't know if, if Joe uh, made it here or not. He was going to. He is here. All right, Joe, I hope you're ready. We're getting close. And I'm going to turn it over to you. So this last one here is tic-tac-toe. Now, normally I would have a bunch of groups. I'd have six or seven teams playing all at the same time. So the goal here is, one, you can see Stella's having a hard time. That ball has to stay on that saucer cone. If it rolls off. I don't see off, the video right now. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I was going so well. Now I see it. Now you see it. I'm going to back up. I'm going to back up so you can see what I said. Ha, ah, thank you. Hey, I did pretty good. First five, I was five for five. All right, move forward a little bit. All right, here we go. So we have our cones up to play tic-tac-toe. They have, they have the balls numbered oh, one. Oh, no, three. Stella, come back. All right, I need to unmute it myself. All right, so if the ball falls off the cone, that player has to go back and put it on. It happens to Stella three times, which gives the red team a pretty easy victory. Um, and here you can really see which two students are sprinting. If you watch the boxes on the right corner, you see the heart rates, you can see, you know, which two go up and then you can watch them go down and two other ones go up and then they come down. It's kind of fun to watch. Now, obviously as they run more and more, they will stay in the yellow and the orange zones. All right, once it gets a little bit harder and they realize, you know, a foot race isn't always the best strategy, they will start blocking. So this goes on continuous until we get our, a winner, which we just hid here. So blue locked out. They kind of smushed that cone so it stayed put. But they had the balls in order of one, two, three, or three, two, one counts. And you really have to be careful. You make a mistake, and you do really fall behind. So if this red player here doesn't go for a block, they're for sure going to lose. And there it is. There's an easy victory for blue. You can see the one, the two, the three, so you know that they won. Now, you can make this a lot harder. I always teach it this way with one, two, three. Oh, Bellatina's going to come back. Look at Stella cheating her little heart out. So I do make them do a high five when they come back to prevent that cheating. But um, even though they cheated, Team Red still pulled it off. Congratulations to them. Every time they play this game, it gets harder and harder as the strategy gets smarter and smarter. Now, again, we're playing one, two, three. Very, very, very easy. There, you see that? Maya immediately went over and made a block because she knows if she doesn't block them, they're going to lose. So now every turn they go, all three balls, the next people run, you're allowed to move one ball on each turn. It can be your ball or the other person. Oh, that was nice, Elisa. Set that back up. But that was a ball they needed. Team Blue moved the ball out of the way, but put it in order of one, two, three for Team Red. So maybe it wasn't as nice as Lisa as I thought it was. <laughs> it gave her the victory. I love it. So it's pretty cool. Now, I'm going to go back here to the screen so I can see everybody. I'm going to stop sharing my screen, unless there's something anybody wants to jump in here and see. But I want to see your faces again. All right. And I am back. So I love this game. You can tell there's a lot of strategy there. I would now evolve. There, each, Like I said, every ball has a one, two. So here's a three. But it also has a K on it. So we can do tic-tac-toe with the alphabet, A, B, C, to make it easy. You know, then go to C, D, F, and those things. So they learn the proper order of the alphabet. Also, if it's older students, I say, go grab three balls. Make sure that nobody has the same number. So they're going to get a one, a seven, and maybe a six. You know, who knows? It's completely random. Or we're going to get a, an F, a Q, and, a, and then a B. And then they have to put them in that order, which is much harder, takes a lot more thought, and they really have to strategize as a team. And they'll line themselves up in order, you know, to take off. But then, of course, once they take off, what is, I think it was General Patton said that, you know, only good plan is thrown out on the battlefield. So it goes on the south pretty quickly. All right. I gave you guys a lot. I gave you six activities in just 25 minutes. So I'm sure there's questions that you're going to have. Throw them out here. And Joe is our resident expert. He's sitting there ready to go. Uh, don't forget to take yourself off mute. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thanks, Tim. Uh, I assume everybody can hear me, correct? Yep, gotcha. Very good. Um, any questions out there for, for Tim? Outstanding job. Um, I kind of missed the first two minutes or three minutes, so I apologize. I don't know how, how much Tim went into outstanding presenter. 
Um, he's doing 80 to 90 presentations and conferences and everything. Um, so hopefully a lot of you have the opportunity to see him. So if you're at any of the state uh, shape or a for conferences, you know, take the time to go see his presentations as they're outstanding. Um, if there's any coordinators or any lead teachers that actually want him to come in to do professional developments, he does the same thing. So, um, you know, by all means, contact him. I think he gave you the information there. Um, but any questions for Tim about any of the games or what he does or anything right off right off the bat? As I'm sharing my screen here, no. So Tim must did a great job there explaining everything. Um, so just real quickly about hard zones. I think I see, I recognize some of the, the teachers on the call. Um, I think we may have someone that's not experienced um, hard zones before because they asked the question what the was in the corner um, when Tim was uh, was talking. And of course, that's what we call the, the hard zones big board. Um, um, if you um, if you haven't seen group technology, group fitness technology, we say wearable fitness technology because it's not just heart rate. It actually covers heart rate and steps as well. Um, so um, you know, the big board is you can um, project it in your in your gyms and it gives you a chance to give real time feedback. One of the things Tim didn't didn't show was um, the, the students he was having after he did a, um, an activity, they would run over to look at the iPad to see um, what their heart rates were. Um, so it really does motivate them. Um, it, it, gets, it gives you the ability to first give that real time, real time live feedback. Um, it gives you the ability to do individual instruction because um, you may have some kids that are working you know, really hard or some kids that may are not working hard enough. Uh, you can see the colors on the big board. Most of his students <laughs> were in the yellow zone, which we kind of call that moderate. Um, so you have the ability to capture that moderate to vigorous physical activity. You know, it's real time data, live real time data. You have the reports afterwards. Uh, it allows you to do that individual instruction. Um, one of the things you see here, and you kind of see the big board in the background. Um, this is Daryl Solomon with the school, the Stillwater School District. They helped us actually create hard zones. Um, their aha moment was the first time they started using hard zones in the big board. Um, the kids they thought were working hard weren't working the hardest. And the kids they didn't think were working hard were working the hardest. Anybody, anybody be a guess which two groups of students they are? I'll, I'll jump in real quick. So they thought the athletes were always working the hardest and they were always making the A's and B's. And actually the obese kids or the non-athletes a lot of times are working out working the, um, the athletes. So it really does level the playing field and takes this subjectivity totally out of assessment if you choose to assessment. Um, you, you, you can do some goal setting. We have fit points and fit, um, fit stars. You can do goal setting. Um, it does provide a great degree of safety. We don't sell hard zones as a safety device. Um, but we have story after story of teachers telling us of seeing kids with high resting heart rates. Um, and, you know, what we basically tell teachers then is, you know, put on another sensor, you know, for the, the, the student just to confirm it is a high resting heart rate of like 150, 160, which is really high. A lot of times it may be misprescribed medications, but um, one of the um, uh, one of the things is one out of every hundred students in your class is, has some type of heart um, defect. Um, so you can imagine how many students you're seeing a day. You may, maybe it's two or three. Um, so you have the ability to see some underlying issues that you may may have out there. Um, so it, it does provide a degree of safety. Um, it allows you to see the data and do a data analysis. Um, you can use it in health classes and do cross curricular type things. And you know, your kids have have heart rate. You know, they have their Apple watches and Fitbits and see heart rate, but they don't really understand how to use it in a lot of cases. So it's an opportunity for you to really teach them how to use heart rate. And um, it allows you to, to, to evaluate your, your own program as well, to, val you know, val to validate how, if you are getting those kids up into that moderate range of physical activity. And as Tim talked about, it's SEL. Um, and and you know, as, as far as we, have, we show MVPA as a data point. So it actually shows you that percentage because the CDC says, all kids should be spending 50% of their class time in the NVPA range. You actually can show that um, on the big board and you see that data. Um, any questions there at all? I'm trying to, want to go through this pretty quickly, but I know the next question is always, well, I know wearable fitness technology, group technologies can be fairly expensive. Um, there are funding opportunities out there with COVID funds. Um, so you can go to our website um, and uh, see a number of different links. Our funding page will give you information on the COVID um, um, funding. Um, there's a lot of ESSER funds and SE funds out there as well. Um, and we have a blog series. So you can go to our website and get information on funding. There is funding um, available out there. 
Now I'm kind of in with my last slide. Um, this QR code, if you actually scan this QR code, is, it's on the screen. Um, it will take you to our website, which gives you the opportunity to, to um, look at a couple of different areas, funding, about hard zones, um, um, uh, and so on. So I encourage you to, to, to scan the QR code and, and visit our website um, if you're interested. And then one of our, our um, sales managers will will contact you. And I see one of them raising their hand now. So Sandy Moore, since uh, it comes a good a good segue, Sandy had had a comment. Uh, yeah, one of the things on funding that we have found and one of our, I'm just organizing with Kyle Salvo. He is the fundraising queen or king, I should say, in the St. Louis area. He raises over twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 every year. Used to be with the American Heart Association, but now he's one of the leaders in the nation with the Health Moves Minds. And he actually raises his money and his charity that he's named is his PTO. So now he is able to keep all that money in his building and he buys all kinds of stuff. So if you don't have funding, the Health Moves Minds programs is a great, uh, a great way to do that. Good. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Andy. Anybody else have any questions or, or comments? Uh, we're a little bit over, I think, for our 30 minutes. Tim, you have any closing comments? Great, great job, um, by the way. Uh, the brain play is an, an incredible um, um, you know, product. Uh, he just showed a couple, two of the different activities, but um, with numbers and letters and, um, you know, it, there's so much you can do with uh, with that, uh, with that product. And it's, you know, it, it's adding, you know, literacy to physical activity, which is outstanding. Um, yeah, it comes with a book, or I should say guide that has about 108 activities. So there's lots that teach literacy, math, uh, games, like we did tic-tac-toe, bowling, trades, you know, code breakers, those types of things. There are bilingual activities as well. So you can help English to Spanish speakers and vice versa. And I wish I did mention this. I mean, you brought it up, brought it up, Joe. When I had everybody set up with the, the sensors, all eight of those girls huddled a lot, huddled around the iPad and were looking at their numbers. And like I've heard people tell me over and over again with their students, the first time they put them on, they are just like magnets and they can't wait to see their heart rates. I'm like, which one am I? Which one am I? And, you know, like, you know, you have the number, they're all on there. So if it's a two, you're number two. And then they all learned where their spots were. It was a lot of fun to witness that firsthand with my own children and their friends, of course. Good. Thanks, Tim. Uh, if we don't have any other questions, we'll conclude uh, the webinar. Um, Sarah, I don't know if you had any closing comments <laughs> since, since uh, you're the moderator. <laughs> No, I think you, you all did a wonderful job. Thank you, Tim, for demonstrating what you do and what you uh, offer these teachers and district coordinators. And I thank you all for coming. You'll be getting a, yes, you will be getting a recording of this video. Someone just asked the same question. Um, you will be getting it. Uh, and uh, that will go out either later today or tomorrow. And I think we also have these on our webinar series on our website as well. So there's yes. a lot of webinars out there that we've done over the um, the past couple of years um, on a number of different subjects. So um, when you can scan the QR code, you have the chance to, to go there too as well. So, all right, everybody. Thank you. Everybody have a great rest of the afternoon. Um, and we'll hopefully see you at a, a conference or uh, you contact us. Thank you.